so students in this video we are going to discuss about pituitary gland in detail and i'm going i'm also going to explain you about the type of hormones which are secreted from the pituitary gland also so in detail explanation will be given in this video so you can watch this video till the end so coming to this pituitary gland and normally coming to this anatomy this will be the structure of the uh, pituitary gland and it is present at the below basement region of the brain as if you see in the picture it can clearly uh, it can clearly visible that the pituitary gland is present at the basement region of the brain so if you see here this is the structure of the pituitary gland and normally this pituitary gland uh, con contains two lobes which is called as anterior lobe and another is called as posterior lobe so this anterior lobe is called as anterior pituitary gland and this posterior lobe is called as posterior pituitary gland and there are also other names for this so your anterior pituitary gland is also called as adenohypophysis and posterior pituitary gland is also called as neurohypophysis right and this both anterior pituitary gland as well as the posterior pituitary gland will be separated with pars intermedia so i have mentioned here this is called as pars intermedia so the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland will be separated by pars intermedia right so here normally this pituitary gland is present below the hypothalamus so if you see here this is the region of the hypothalamus and below this hypothalamus this pituitary gland will be present and coming to the size of this pituitary gland it is 1 cm in diameter and it is 0.5 to 1 gram in weight right and this pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis so it is also known as hypophysis and it is p shape uh, you know the structure uh, resembles like a p and here it is present at the basement region of the brain and it contains two parts i have said you anterior lobe which is called as anterior pituitary gland or in the hypophysis and then there is posterior lobe which is a posterior pituitary gland which is also called as neurohypophysis so firstly let us discuss about the anterior lobe so here anterior lobe is nothing but the anterior pituitary gland right so firstly let us discuss about the anterior pituitary gland and this anterior pituitary gland is also called as adenohypophysis which i have said you and it is a front lobe which is present at the floor i mean the basement region of the brain so you know about the uh, region of cella tell cella right so at the region of the cella tursia it is present below that cella tursia okay so it is a major organ of the endocrine system so what is endocrine system endocrine system is nothing but the together of the organs which are responsible for the production of hormones are called as endocrine system so here uh, there are different type of organs and among those this pituitary gland the two the anterior lobe is a major organ of the endocrine system exactly right so why it is called as major organ of the endocrine system because uh, this anterior lobe performs a major and vital role for the production of the major i mean the maximum number of hormones so what are those hormones growth hormone which is shortly said to be as gh and thyroid stimulating hormone which is shortly said to be as tsh and adrenocorticotropic hormone which is shortly said to be as acth prolactin and follicle stimulating hormone which is shortly said to be as fsh and luteinizing hormone which is shortly said to be as lh so these are the six hormones which will be secreted by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland right so firstly let us discuss uh, about all of these hormones in detail so coming to the first one growth hormone which is shortly said to be as gh so it is a protein hormone so we know that the proteins are nothing but a group of amino acids right protein contains a group of amino acids all of this group of amino acids together will form a protein right so this growth hormone is a protein hormone which contains 190 amino acids so this 190 amino acids together uh, will form the protein hormone and i've coming to this uh, this growth hormone is also called as somatotropin and the major function which will be done by this growth hormone is it regulates the growth and metabolism of the human body right so the size of the muscles and bones will get increased with the help of this hormone called as growth hormone so the growth and metabolism of the human body will be done by this hormone called as growth hormone and coming to the second one thyroid stimulating hormone which is shortly said as tsh so this thyroid stimulating hormone will stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxine and now this thyroxine will in turn regulate the another called as triiodothyronine right so it is mainly responsible for the metabolism of the tissues and here the thyroxine is called as t4 hormone and triiodothyronine is called as t3 hormone right and actually this thyroid stimulating hormone is a glycoprotein hormone so why it is so why it is what is the major function of this tsh it is mainly used for the metabolism of the tissues 
right and now coming to the third one adrenocorticotropic hormone which is shortly said to be as ACTH so it is a polypeptide tropic hormone and it is responsible for the biological stress right so it is needed for the adrenal glands to work properly so I am going to explain you this statement see so normally uh, this is, uh, we are going to discuss about the pituitary gland right so it secretes ACTH which means adrenocorticotropic hormone from its anterior pituitary gland right so it will be secreted and now it stimulates upon adrenal gland so we know about the adrenal gland right adrenal gland is present in the upper region of the kidney right and now once this ACTH will stimulate on this adrenal gland then it releases cortisol right so this adrenal gland will release the cortisol so this cortisol is responsible for the biological stress right so this is a, a thing which you people have to remember so from the anterior pituitary gland the ACTH which is called as adrenocorticotropic hormone will be released which stimulates upon the adrenal gland and now this adrenal gland will release cortisol hormone and this hormone is responsible for the biological stress so in this way the ACTH which is called as adrenocorticotropic hormone will perform its function and coming to the fourth one prolactin so this prolactin is shortly said to be as PRL and it is also called as lactogenic hormone so why it is called as lactogenic hormone let us see now so in females, I mean this prolactin hormone can be seen in males as well as the females. So in females, it is mainly used for the breast development and also for the production of the milk. Right? It can be seen in males and females. So in normally in women who are, who are non-pregnant, this prolactin hormone, uh, the range of this prolactin hormone is less than 25 nanograms per ml. And coming to the women who are pregnant, right so here we have discussed about the women who are non-pregnant the levels should be less than 25 nanograms per ml and coming to the women who are pregnant the levels should be 34 to 386 nanograms per ml so this is the basic uh, levels which should be present in the women who are pregnant as well as who are the non-pregnant and coming to the males it should be less than 15 nanograms per ml and the function of the prolactin in males is still unknown but they came to know that this males also contains prolactin hormone but the function is still unknown so now coming to the next hormone so now coming to this fsh follicle stimulating hormone which is called as glycoprotein polypeptide hormone so it is also called as gonadotropin and normally this gonadotropin or as this follicle stimulating hormone will be secreted from the gonadotropic cells so where are these gonadotropic cells are present they are present in the gonads so what are gonads gonads are nothing but the sex organs of human beings like if you say in human beings of male uh, they contain testes so they are gonads and coming to the females they contain ovaries so they are called as gonads so the sex organs of male as well as the female human beings are called as gonads and in those gonads gonadotropic cells will be present and from this gonadotropic cells the gonadotropin which is also called as follicle stimulating hormone will be produced will be released so what is the major function of this gonadotropin so it is mainly used for the development and growth pubertal maturation and reproductive process in the body so these are the major functions which will be done by the follicle stimulating hormone which is also called as gonadotropin which will be secreted from the gonadotropic cells right so another hormone i have said you right luteinizing hormone which is shortly said to be as lh so both fsh as well as the lh will work together you know it will get paired up with follicle stimulating hormone and it will work together in the reproductive system right so finally uh, if the, someone asks you what are the functions of the anterior pituitary gland in some examinations or else some type of short questions then what you're going to write so it controls the chemical and water balance in the body right so it controls the growth and metabolism of the body and it influences sexual behavior and it stimulates growth and maturation of the gonads which are called as sex organs of human beings so this is about the anterior pituitary gland so now let us discuss about the posterior pituitary gland which is a posterior lobe right so i have already said you the other name of posterior pituitary gland is neurohypophysis right so it is very small in size and it is p-shaped right and the weight of this posterior pituitary gland ranges from uh, ranges with 500 milligrams and it is located below hypothalamus right it is neuroectodermal in origin so i forgot to say about the anterior lobe it is ectodermal in origin but coming to this posterior pituitary gland it is neuroectodermal in origin so what are the hormones which are secreted by posterior pituitary gland so the only two type of hormones will be secreted by this posterior pituitary gland they are anti dietric hormone which is shortly said to be as adh and then there is oxytocin so firstly let us discuss about anti diuretic hormone so now let us discuss about 
antidiuretic hormone which is shortly said to be as ADH. So it is also called as vasopressin. So it mainly helps the kidneys to manage the amount of water which is present in the body. So what I mean to say is that, so we know that the blood, uh, when, when you come into the kidneys, the blood will get mixed in the water for the purification process, right? So uh, that water balancing the metabolism, water metabolism will be taken place by this, uh, you know, antidiuretic hormone. Right, so it is called as water metabolism. So balancing the, or as a managing the amount of water in the blood is called as water metabolism actually. So this water metabolism uh, will be functioned by this ADH hormone, which is said to be as antidiuretic hormone, or as it is also called as vasopressin. So normally there are two sensors, which is called as osmotic sensors, and then there is baroreceptors. So th these two plays a major and vital role in this water metabolism process. So actually they will get interacted with uh, this ADH hormone. I mean this vasopressin hormone then it performs the water metabolism process so actually this osmotic sensors uh, will get uh, you need to get interacted with the sodium potassium chlorine and carbon dioxide ions which are present in the blood such that uh, it get reacted with this ADH hormone to perform this water metabolism function and what does this baroreceptors will do it mainly helps in storing and releasing the water as I have said you these are present in the kidney so it stores and releases the water so there is another function of these baroreceptors so what is it it mainly helps to sense the thirst feeling thirsty feeling okay so so the normal range of the ADH hormone should be 1 to 5 picograms per ml so if uh, if the ADH is in deficiency or else if the ADH hormone is released in excess then uh, you can see some type of symptoms in your body. So what are those let us see enough. So if the ADH hormone is, uh, no, is released very low, then this, uh, then this result, if it is released very low, then what will happen? Then these symptoms can be seen like diabetes insipidus, polyuria and extreme thirst, which is called as polydipsia. Polyuria is nothing but uh, excretion of more amount of urine. Excess urine is called as polyuria. So these are the symptoms which you can see if the, if the ADH hormone is released very less than this level right and now uh, if the ADH hormone is released more than this level than 1 to 5 picograms per ml if the if this uh, what we say this antidiuretic hormone is released more then you can see some other type of symptoms which are very dangerous like if you see leukemia lymphoma and pancreatic cancer brain cancer cystic fibrosis and emphysema and tuberculosis so the detailed explanation of the cystic fibrosis has been given and the link will be given in the description box so if you see it you can understand actually it is a genetic disorder so due to this genetic disorder what will happen the ADH hormone will be released in excess right so this is a, a normal symptoms which you can see in a person uh, if the person is infected with this deficiency or else excess release of ADH hormone so coming to the second hormone oxytocin so I have said you that the posterior gland will secrete only two hormones which is said to be as uh, antidiuretic hormone and there is oxytocin. So firstly we have completed about the ADH hormone. So now let us discuss about the oxytocin which is shortly named as OXT. Right. So this oxytocin it is a peptide hormone and actually it is seen in males as well as the females. So coming to the females uh, it mainly helps to increase the breast muscles. I mean to uh, to make that muscles strong not only the breast but even also the uterus muscles will also be uh, will, will also be strong uh, with the help of this hormone called as oxytocin right so why uh, the uterus muscles should be very strong because the development of the baby uh, you know the development of the embryo in the human beings in the female human beings will be done in the uterus right so this oxytocin will access chemical messenger in the brain towards human sexual behavior I mean uh, you know if you want to feel love towards opposite gender then this hormone plays a major and vital role which is called as oxytocin and hence this hormone is also called as love hormone right it is also called as love hormone so in females it is mainly used for uh, breast milk ejection of breast milk for baby feed and it is also used during the childbirth right and in males it is mainly used uh, to produce um, to produce the sperm and for also the movement of the sperms I mean ejaculating the sperms from the testes so this is a major uh, things which will be uh, done with the help of a hormone called as oxytocin so this is about the pituitary gland students if you like my explanation you can like this video and you can subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates thank you